This week in the field, capturing frames for focus stacking. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to In The Field. Thanks for joining me today. If this is the first time you're checking out one of my videos, thanks for giving me a shot. I hope you like what you see and you'll stick around. And if you've got questions about photography, I'd love to hear from you. Comments on the video below, or if you'd like to keep a question private, you can shoot it to me through email. I've got a contact form on my website. It goes directly to my inbox and I usually respond within a day or two. And that's actually what led to today's topic about focus stacking. I've been asked this question several times by a bunch of folks, Linda, Doug, a whole bunch of others over the last several weeks. How do you do focus stacking at both the capture side and the processing side? So that's what we're going to cover this week. So this will be a two-parter today. We're going to talk about capturing frames for focus stacking. And then in the in post video later this week, we'll do the processing side of things. So what is focus stacking? It's a technique to get extreme depth of field. It's very popular in macro photography where you're typically working at a very shallow depth of field, like you know, f2, f1.4, and all these little thin slices of extreme focus can get stacked together, hence the name focus stacking, to get a very sharp photo all the way through the frame. We can also use this in landscape photos, and that's where I'm going to show you how I've done this today. Now, um, why don't you see focus stacking for me more often? Mainly because of the subject matter that I photograph. I'm at the ocean a lot. The ocean is moving. It's not necessarily the needs to be tack sharp, especially when you have you know a horizon and <laughs> clouds back there and so forth. So for me, focus stacking is not something I'm typically doing, but I went to a location that really lends itself to the technique. This is Liberty Station. It's a former military base and now it's been you know privatized and it's got some really cool subjects that Focus stacking fits really well. Let me take you out there and show you this uh, particular corridor that I photographed. Well, I've come out here to Liberty Station for focus stacking. Why did I come here? The architecture. There are some really nice long corridors with repeating arches, and that is a perfect situation for focus stacking, where even at something like f16, you're not going to get the full and complete depth. You need to do some type of blending in post to do that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get some focus stacking done. I'm going to go find a nice corridor, get set up, and go through the steps of capturing the frames. I've set up my composition, dialed in at f8, and I'm going to take a series of shots focusing at different depths into the scene. Why f8? Well, typically our lenses are sharpest around f8. You've got a variable lens that goes from, say, f4 or f28 all the way down to f22. At sweet spots, usually we're at f8 to f11. So I'm going to use that and then leverage multiple shots to get the full depth of field once the post-processing is done. I've got two approaches to set focus point. I can do it hand held, so to speak, and just adjusting it between each shot. Uh, I could also use the remote control that goes with the Sony app. Other cameras, like I know the Nikon D850 has this, the Fuji cameras have this. You can actually set up focus deck in the camera. Do that to minimize how much you touch your tripod. Now that I've got the sequence of photos taken, I put my hand in front of the lens, grab one more shot. And that way, when I'm looking at these back in the machine, I can easily see where's my sequence of photos. My hand in front is the marker at the end. I'll throw that away later. It makes it my culling job and my grouping job much simpler in post-processing. All right, so having watched that footage, one of the questions that usually comes up is, well, why didn't you just shoot at F16 or F22 and just get the full depth? Uh, that's possible. F16 might have done a pretty good job, but with something this deep, uh, there's typically some type of fall off from your focus point. You may have heard about hyperfocal distance and there's a given a lens and a f-stop, there's a focus point where you get the maximum depth of field, but there's always fall off. Um, the other challenge with stopping down beyond f16 is something called diffraction. And that has to do with the way the light bends around the blades of the aperture. And if it gets the aperture gets too small, you start to actually get softness as a result. And so I tend not to push beyond f16. But when you're focus stacking, you can shoot at the aperture that your lens is sharpest at. Uh, that's typically f8 or f11. That's really the tip of the week. If you're going to do focus stacking, you don't have to be at a very small f-stop like an f16 or an f14. Shoot around f8 and just take more frames. And you saw me do that in this particular location. You know, the, where did I focus ultimately is, I think I took five 
shots total and just worked my focus point all the way along the left hand wall of this corridor because each point I moved farther and farther back I'm getting a different focal plane and eventually landed in the center now the physics of the world will mimic that on the opposite side right if I'm shooting now this this series of arches and I'm focused on the first arch if I focus on the left hand side of the arch and that arch is <laughs> perpendicular to or sorry parallel to the front of my lens well then the right hand side of the arch will also be on the same focal plane that will also be in focus so it's um the the the, the main part of this technique when you're in the field you know choose an aperture that is going to be sharp for your lens and then decide where in the frame do you need to capture uh, a, a focused frame if you've got objects that are in the foreground somewhat into the middle of the ground somewhat in the background and then way far off in the distance you want to make sure that you focus on each one of those I've rarely had to go beyond you know five to six frames for a landscape if you're doing macro Take a look at some other folks that do really uh, great macro work. Don Komarechka comes to mind. He's got a fantastic YouTube channel. He does some amazing macro work, but he may be doing 30, 35, 40 different frames to stack them together. So it does depend on your subject matter. But that's the fundamentals of focus stacking. And that is going to wrap up the field part of this week's video. Come back in a couple of days. I'm going to show you the post-processing side of the thing. We'll grab the frames that I captured. I'll show you how to stack those together and we'll do some processing on it too. Well, until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.